One of the most momentous of all signs is that human beings who have been endowed with a special power by the Lord God, but who use that power for purposes that are evil, who corrupt and destroy everything that they touch, who are oppressors, these human beings are called Gog and Magog, and they will be released into the world. And when they are released into the world, the Quran declares that one of their most important missions that they have to perform is that they, they, will, they will take a, a people, a town which was destroyed, and the people of the town were expelled from the town. And the people of the town were then banned from ever returning to that town to reclaim it as their own. But when Gog and Magog are released, they will bring that people back to that town to reclaim it as their own. I have come to the conclusion from my study of Islamic eschatology that the town is Jerusalem. So when the Jews are brought back to Jerusalem 2,000 years after they were expelled, we know that Gog and Magog are the ones who brought them back. When the state of Israel is restored in the Holy Land 2,000 years after the Lord God had destroyed Israel, we know that it is Gog and Magog who have restored the state of Israel in the Holy Land. Of course, it's an imposter Israel. Who then are Gog and Magog? Who are Gog and Magog? We say that Gog and Magog is the Judeo-Christian Zionist alliance, that Western Christianity, not Orthodox Christianity, Western Christianity and European Jews forged a reconciliation and forged an alliance. It's a Zionist alliance. And we would like the people of Russia to know that from the Quran, the identity of Gog and Magog it is that Judeo-Christian Zionist alliance which today controls power in the Western world, in Western civilization. They are the ones who brought the Jews back to the Holy Land. They are the ones who have restored the state of Israel in the Holy Land. So this is one of the most momentous signs of the last day of the end of history. And we are now living in that time when Gog and Magog are corrupting the whole world. They are the world's greatest oppressors. Eschatology makes a distinction between the end of history and the end of the world. There are two separate events. The world will end when the mountains are going to become like pieces of cotton wool floating. <laughs> the, the world will end when the present material universe will be transformed into something different. If this is a world of space and of time, the new world after that would be different. And uh, the the, the world will end with the resurrection when all people will come out of their graves in a new, new life to be judged before the Lord God and to be rewarded or punished in heaven or in hell. This is the end of the world. But before the world ends, Islamic eschatology uh, believes that there will be an end to history. The historical process will culminate with the final and conclusive triumph of truth over falsehood, truth over all rivals. And with the final and conclusive triumph of justice over injustice and oppression. 
uh, Islamic eschatology locates that end of history with the return of the true Messiah, the son of Mary, Jesus, the son of Mary, Allah's blessings be upon them both, that he will return to the world in a triumphant return and that he will restore in the Holy Land the true state of Israel, the holy state of Israel. And so we recognize the present state of Israel to be an imposter and it will be replaced by the true state of Israel. The present state of Israel is an oppressor, the world's greatest oppressor. And there is zero tolerance for oppression in Islam. And so the present state of Israel will come to an end when Jesus returns and it will be replaced by the true and authentic holy state of Israel, which had come from the prophets David and Solomon, Allah's blessings be upon them both. In this respect, there is no difference between Christian eschatology and Islamic eschatology. We both have the same views concerning the end of history. And so we, uh, we, will, we will expect the end of history to come first and then the end of the world to come after that. When will the world end? I don't know. Professor Dugan does not know. Nobody knows when the world will end. Only the Lord God knows when the world will end. And so we cannot offer any opinion on that subject. But when will history end? Oh yes, we do have a lot, a lot of evidence, a lot of signs by which we can know that the end of history is approaching, that we are close to the end time. And I will be happy to share some of those signs by which we can uh, anticipate that we are close to the end of history. greatest sign of the last day is the emergence of someone known as Dajjal, the false messiah. The Christians call him the Antichrist. And we know of him as the false messiah, Dajjal, the false messiah, al Masih Dajjal. Dajjal is someone created by the Lord God and he has a mission his mission is to impersonate the true Messiah. He is going to have to appear as a human being because the true him, Messiah is a human being. So the Jal has to appear as a human being. But before he makes his appearance in the world as a human being, he has a long period of time when he is in the world but he's not in our world of space and time. So you cannot see him. There are angels in the world. There are angels in Moscow, aren't there? Yes, there are angels in the world. Can we see them? No, we can't. So in the same way that you cannot see the angels, although they are here in the world, so too you cannot see the Jal, although he's here on earth. Hmm? Now, when the Jal is released into the world and he begins his mission to impersonate the true Messiah and therefore to rule the world from Jerusalem, the, the Quran speaks about three stages of a shadow. This is not the Jal in person as yet. This is the shadow from behind the scene he's operating. And this shadow comes in three stages. And my understanding, my interpretation of the Quran is that the first stage of the shadow saw the emergence of Pax Britannica. And the second stage of the shadow saw the emergence of Pax Americana. And in the final stage, the third stage of the shadow, the world is going to witness an effort to bring about, to bring about a Pax Judaica that will succeed Pax Americana. 
when Pax Judaica comes into being, if it does, then at the end of a certain period of time, then the Jal will finally appear in human form. And he will be a Jew, he'll appear as a human being, and he will be ruling over the state of Israel. And from Jerusalem, when Israel becomes a ruling state in the world, then from Jerusalem he'll declare, I am the Messiah. And the Jews, most of them, will accept him as the Messiah, but not the Christian world, not the Orthodox Christian world, and not the world of Islam. We'll say, no, this is the Antichrist. This is the false Messiah. These are two of the most momentous signs of the end of history. The mission of Dajjal is to deceive. The word Dajjal means the one who deceives. And so he operates by way of deception. One of the major accomplishments of Dajjal in, uh, in deceiving mankind is to, I would consider it to be the most, the most uh, important accomplishment of the job is to remove real money from the market. Real money being money with intrinsic value, gold and silver coins, and replace it with paper. And paper, which has no intrinsic value, it has only a fictitious value. And control the world of paper money with a banking system and central banks all privately or including the Central Bank of Russia. And using this paper money to oppress, to exploit and to eventually enslave mankind. This is Dajjal, the great deceiver. He deceives you. And it is time for the Russian people to recognize what many Muslims are now recognizing that this paper money monetary system is bogus, it's fraudulent, it's haram, pro prohibited for us. And when Jesus returns, every Russian should ask himself, when Jesus returns, will he be using the Russian ruble? Is there any, any Russian that ignorant as to believe that when Jesus returns, he'll be using the Russian ruble? No, he won't. When Jesus returns, he'll be using dinar and dirham, the gold coin and silver coin. Similarly, the Jal has a mission of trying to deceive the world with a fake Islam, so that the world will look to this imposter Islam and consider it to be the real Islam. So that's why they created ISIS. They created ISIS to present to the world the ugliest possible face of Islam. The religion of Islam is a religion that attracts mankind. It is attractive. People's hearts are touched by Islam and they long for it. That's how Islam came into the world. It's a religion of love. It's a religion of peace. It's a religion of fraternity. It's a religion of love. But now we have ISIS with a version of Islam that people are scared of and they're running away from that. That's why you have thousands and thousands of refugees fleeing from ISIS and going to where the bread is in Germany and in France and so on. This is, this is evidence that ISIS does not have Islam. Because if they had Islam, Muslims would be attracted to it. Rather, Muslims are fleeing from it. This is the Jah's attempt to sabotage the role of Islam in the end time. This is Dajjal's attempt to brainwash mankind into believing that that false version of Islam represented by ISIS is the true Islam when it is not. Here is my first uh, response to your question.